water is killing your gardens. Got a really interesting video today. I'm going to combine some things. I'm going to talk about how I believe that you guys are overwatering your gardens. It is super hot now. We're facing super high temperatures here in the Midwest and the Northeast, and people are giving their plants way too much water. So I want to talk about how you can give your plants less water and still have thriving plants. And I also want to go through here. We're going to do some harvesting because I got some newer crops that just started producing this year that I want to show you guys that are really good. We're going to change things up and start off in the back here first with these currant bushes. Last spring I planted some red, white, and pink currant bushes that I got from Rain Tree Nursery. One of the best nurseries around if you need plants get them from Rain Tree. These plants have quadrupled in size and this year we are getting a really nice harvest from them and I've never had currants so it's been nice to come out here try something new. So over here we have the red currants that are all currently ripe. The red currants got a little sweet taste with a little bit of tartness at the end. Then we have the white currant. A little less tart, pretty sweet. And my favorite, the pinks. Really happy I grew this one. Not tart, just completely sweet. If you're going to grow currants, I suggest the pinks. This area of my garden, I guess you can refer to it as a back to Eden style planting. This whole area is basically wood chips. This area here never gets any artificial watering. This ground right here, if I were to come through here, we have not had rain for over a week. If I dig down, it is moist just a half inch from the surface. I've got all this tarragon I started from seed last year that is six feet tall. We have this Coreopsis that was a tiny little root ball that I put here last year and it is just thriving right now. The butterflies really like it, but they're not on there right now. All my grapevines are going crazy. You can see the comfries are begging to be chopped down. And just look at this strawberry patch that started out with 75 bare root strawberries. Now we have thousands of them and we are expanding even more this year. No fertilizer, no water ever with these. I was hoping to find at least one strawberry in here to show you guys. I just did a video about growing strawberries where we pick some of these June bearing strawberries, but they're all gone now. They are focusing on putting out these runners to overtake the rest of this garden. So some people have a problem with weeds. I have a problem with strawberries. So I'll be cutting off a lot of these runners here, maybe redirecting some back into the old plants, but everything's doing great here. All these different types of raspberries, they're starting to pop up all over the place and spread. We have some blueberries that are starting to actually thrive this year. And we got some berries on there. If you're struggling to grow hydrangea, just put it in the middle of a bunch of weeds and it'll do great. So just back to Eden style. If you are lazy and don't want to take care of your garden and you just want to come in here and harvest stuff after planting it one time, this is the way to go. Starts off really slow, but after about a year or so, year and a half, even better when you get into the second year, things really start to take care of themselves. I've even got the eBay walking onions I planted last year that are doing really great in these wood chips. But let's get back to the water point before we go make some more harvest. If you've ever noticed, if you have thunderstorms or rain comes through, it's almost like your plants grew overnight. However, when you come through your garden with a hose or even just captured rainwater and water your plants sometimes twice a day, they really don't do much. This is an observation I've taken really serious in my garden. Some people are concerned that they're using city water. It might have chlorine in it. I'm sitting on well water and I noticed even with my well water, it just, it doesn't have good stuff the plants want. Here's something to rack your brain. Do the plants need water or do they want the stuff in the water? And the water is just a delivery system. The air we breathe is over 70% nitrogen. So when that water comes through the air, it's grabbing that nitrogen and it's pushing it into the ground. That is why after a storm or a rainfall, your plants look so big afterwards. They're getting a big dose of nitrogen. Rain is also taking all that natural mulch on the soil surface, especially in areas that aren't tilled or untouched or areas you mulch yourself. They're taking those nutrients, feeding them down into the soil like compost tea. Same with the wood chips. Every time it rains, plants are getting compost tea from those wood chips. Your plants don't need artificial watering and they don't want 
artificial watering. I follow all the gardening forums really close on Facebook. One of the big problems I'm seeing is people posting plants that are yellow and they look like they're curling and drying and they ask everyone what's wrong. And typical of anywhere in the internet, if you're gonna get 20 different responses and 99% of them are wrong. There's a lot of people there saying, you need to water your plants more. Yellowing is a sign of overwatering, and it's a sign that the roots of your plant are starting to rot. So what happens when you artificially water your plants is you're putting water into soil. It's usually tilled soil. That's the soil that gets the driest the quickest because there's no life to hold that soil together and to capture that water. So people keep watering and the roots just get trapped by all that water and air cannot flow through that soil. There's no good life in that soil to help air get through there. There's no aeration. So artificial watering is pretty much just giving the roots a little hydration that's temporary and afterwards they're gonna go back to being the same way they were before. So as an ex-tiller, I'm gonna to try to convince you right now to start your no-till journey. A lot of the conventional people don't like hearing this. They think the whole no-till thing is a gimmick, but I'm telling you as someone that used to till all the time that it is night and day and no-till is definitely the way to go. It's how nature grows undefeated for billions of years and doesn't have to water her plants with a hose. If you think I'm lying, I got some examples to show you to prove that I am right on this. Before we do that, let's grab a couple more harvests. I'm a set it and forget it type of person when it comes to gardening, especially when I plant seeds and stuff. I like to just kind of drill a plant all over the place and come through here and find some stuff. So in this garlic, I started popping some pea seeds in there. You can see the peas are climbing through the garlic. They don't harm the garlic in any way. If anything, they're pumping nitrogen into the soil to help these plants grow. But we are getting a lot of peas on these plants. I've harvested from here every single day and we just keep getting more peas on here. I got more peas over there, but let's go ahead. I planted these beets a while ago and these beets are finally ready. Now, beets are something, you watch them, and you're wondering, why isn't the beet growing in there? And then all of a sudden, you come out here, and the beets all look like this. That's what we're looking for. Sometimes, you just got to ignore your stuff till it grows the way you want it to grow. Look at these. Got some real nice-looking beets right there. These are just the Detroit Reds. You can get these just about anywhere. Really good beets. I do have carrots ready in here, but I did find a swallowtail caterpillar in here. We brought the caterpillar inside so it can grow bigger. So I'm gonna leave this in case any more swallowtails decide to come by and pick these when they're a little bit bigger. I do have some dill here for them, but it doesn't look like we got any caterpillars on the dill right now. The only plants I put in here were beets that are hidden underneath here and ready to harvest. Look at that, no sunlight getting into them. Got plants ready to harvest. And these peas, same thing with these peas. Every single day I come out here and we pop these peas off and they just keep producing more. We got hundreds of tomatoes and volunteer borage growing through here with some radishes just on the other side. So back to the watering, here's one of the things you wanna do. The more plants you have in the ground, the less you have to water, which sounds kind of the opposite. You think the plants would drink all the water. If you want to water less, plant more plants. When plants cover the soil, the sun can't evaporate all the water that goes down in here. And it also gives a place to hide for the worms and the fungi, all the stuff that makes your soil great. So early season, I'll come through here. I'll plant stuff where I want to plant it. You can see here I have tomatoes. I've put these peppers in here. You can see all these bare spots. In a couple weeks, I'm going to come through. I'll be putting green beans everywhere. Anywhere that you can see the ground, I am going to put green beans. Green beans are legumes. They're nitrogen fixers. They're going to make the soil better. I love eating green beans. And they're going to help shade the soil out so we can keep some moisture in so plants like these bell peppers here can thrive. Maybe you don't want to add more plants which is weird, but okay. Use some cardboard. Cardboard is such an efficient mulch, especially if you have weeds and stuff. Like I had tons of quackgrass in here. So I covered it with cardboard, came through, 
made some holes, popped some eggplants in here, tomatoes, peppers through here. Everything else is covered. That soil is protected from the sun. All that soil life is underneath here, making the soil great. And we don't have to water these plants. And lack of water makes stronger plants because when you don't water your plants, the plants send out roots as far as they can go searching for water. A bigger root system means healthier plants. Like they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I've always been a fan of using grass clippings as mulch. But with our setup here, we've created a habitat that slugs absolutely love. There's millions and millions of slugs in my garden. So like by these peppers, I've resorted to a more bare soil approach, but it's not exactly bare soil. If you come in here, you can see all these wood chip fragments. We got all kinds of stuff in here. Now this looks really dry, but if I go like this, look at how moist that soil is down there. It hasn't rained in a week. And look at that. My new favorite method in here in my annual planting areas is mulching with unfinished compost or half finished technically. All that came from here with my chicken composting system. Now this area is uncovered so it gets a lot of rain. What I noticed is the stuff in here that gets a lot of rain if you dig it up, it smells like a swamp. It smells disgusting, anaerobic. Not smell like something you'd want to put on your garden because we want aerobic activity in our gardens. But here's the cool thing. Once you dig this up, use it as mulch on the surface. You get the rain finally come, add some air into that anaerobic compost and fires it up. So you have an active mulch. It's not just keeping all the moisture in your soil, it's an active composting mulch. If you don't have chickens, that's completely fine. You can take your regular compost piles that aren't completely finished and just use that. For you raised bed gardeners, doesn't matter how great that soil is you're filling your raised beds with, you're gonna have watering issues. It's a really good example right here. This is my son's garden. This is some compost we actually bought this year to fill these beds we are making out of some scrap timber we have from the Fast Homesteading Michigan channel. If you're not a sub, search for Fast Homesteading Michigan and sub to that. So this is a 50-50 compost sandy topsoil mix. And as you can see, these plants are doing okay, but they're not doing great. Without any mulch on here or any plants to shade the soil, you can see here that we just have some dead soil and these plants are not exactly thriving in here. Not even the strawberry is thriving in here. Mine are doing a little bit better. You can see all the lettuces are bolting in here. A lot of purslane, volunteer purslane coming in that came in with the compost. Gonna let that grow because the chickens like it and actually tastes pretty good. Contrast that with this bed here where I use native soil and we've used leaves, grass clippings, pretty much everything mixed in here. So this soil is just a great mix of organic matter. We got mulches on top of it. I mean, look at the difference here. That is nice moist soil in there. Before we finish this video, let's go ahead and grab one of these ripe gooseberries right here. Another plant that I was really excited to try and these things are also delicious. So the point of this video was stop watering. That water from your hose is no good for your plants. Let the rain water your garden, even if it takes weeks for the rain to come. If you build your soil right with the proper mulching, not tilling it, and adding more plants to cover the soil. The point is cover the soil and you won't have to water. So if you don't like yellow plants, stop watering and thanks for watching.